Moi, j'ai une question. Julie, est-ce que tu nous parlerais de la consultation publique What about public consultations or tenders Well, yes, let me continue. I was thinking of a transition. Let me cover that transition first. One of the other consequences of opening up FCR to Internet users is the mandatory use of public tenders, as said earlier by our chairman when we spoke about the missions of OP3FT and its works. So let me move on to public consultations. A reminder of what public consultations are all about. The initial idea is that to guarantee transparency in what OP3FT does and to guarantee that Internet users are involved in what takes place at OP3FT, OP3FT bylaws provide for the mandatory use of public consultations once the FCI is open to Internet users. Public consultations, the procedure is decided upon by the OP3FT board because the OP3FT is led by a board, a board of directors. The public consultations will be on what? It will be on all important decisions in relation to changes in the Forgan's project, typically. The changes in the terms and conditions of use, technical specifications, software development. Concretely, let me talk about what I know better, uh, legal charters. We have the major legal charter for Forgans, which is the chart of users of Forgans technology. Once release one is online, any changes to the chart will have to go through a public consultation procedure. That is extremely important. Public consultations as a mechanism will enable the Internet community to validate the major decisions taken by OP3FT, and that's part of the definition of what is an open Internet standard. And what we understand by that is the fact that the community is involved. The community of Internet users is involved in what's taking place at OP3FT. This procedure is managed by a working group at OP3FT specifically set up for each decision before requiring public consultation. The board of directors will decide, for example, for a plan to alter a charter, a working group will be set up for that, as opposed to what you find in other organizations where you put, if it's legal, you put only legal experts. If it's technical, you put only developers. We think of things differently. Uh, in each working group, by definition, you'll have a representative of each team, meaning the three P's that Amory spoke of earlier. Someone f representing the P of promotion, the P of protection, and the P for progress of Forgan's technology, developing Forgan's technology. This is extremely important. Even for legal charters, we'll call on developers and we'll call on people from promotion too, because they have their say in terms of enhancements for uh, legal terms. Now, preparing decisions based on the, what the working groups do. Even before the public consultations, the working group must consult Internet users ahead of time. In other words, the working group, even though at OP, if it's set up at OP3FT, they don't work on their own in isolation. They consult users, when I say Internet users, and not just any user. I'm speaking of users who are representative and who are interested in the topic dealt with in the decision. Let's say tomorrow 
it is a public consultation for updating the FCR or IFAP specifications. For those who don't know these specifications, well, the FAP specifications bear on the composition of Forgan's addresses. You can consult people from Unicode because we use that as a source of inspiration for our specs, and it could be interesting if we were to integrate a new language category or new characters for some language categories. So it's quite important. You shouldn't just think that we work in isolation. We are open to the internet community and open to what they can provide to us. And now let's move on to the public consultation procedure briefly. The first important thing is that it's done online. Each call for comments, as we call them, they're posted on our uh, announcement list at list.forgans.org. Those of you who are following us online, if you are not yet subscribers, do it. Because that's how you learn that there's a public consultation that has started. On this list, you'll also learn if the decision has been adopted or abandoned by the board. The mechanism we have set up, there will be two successive calls for comments. What does this mean exactly? It means that we will submit a decision project to the community, and all interested parties may make their comments. There will be a first call for comments, and each call for comments will have a minimum of 15 days and maximum up to three months. It is the board that decides the duration, depending on the nature and complexity of each decision. If it's a complex project, and we know there will be many comments, it could go up to two or three months. During the first calls to comments, just to explain why we have two successive calls to comments, during the first fall call for comments is so that those who don't have long calls, they can immediately, long comments, they can raise some objections immediately. Let's say we wrote something horrible or we forgot something in the specifications or we made a big mistake. So this first call for comment is to enable anyone to raise obvious objections. And then you have the second call for comments, normally lasting for the same period as the first call for comments, so that people will have more time if they need to raise objections or if they believe that they must present more details or add this to that feature, or you've forgotten this, to give them more time to work on their comments. It is also important to understand that the working groups I spoke of before, the ones in charge of drawing up the decision project presented to the public consultation procedure, between each call for comments, they too also analyze all comments posted. They draw up a report and answer any and all objections raised. So, OP3FT will have to do a lot of work on that because all comments, from the smartest to the most absurd, must be contained in that report. Because we may consider that, no, this comment, I'm not interested, because I've already discussed that in my working group, but that person doesn't know it. So the working group will have to give detailed replies to all comments posted and explain that yes, we'll take it into account or not for this or for that reason. So that's quite important, meaning a lot of work for OP3FT 
once FCRs are open to internet users. So what's new then? And what will we set up once FCR is open to internet users? We recently updated our bylaws, very recently. The announcements of the changes to our bylaws were published on the 1st of October in France in the legal gazettes. And we seized this opportunity to specify the various phases in public consultations. One thing that we specified is that for each public consultation, we'll create and set up online a dedicated web page. And it's, it's, it is on that web page that you'll find the decision project that you, and that, that you'll be able to download all the summary reports that will be drawn up by the OP3FT working group. And it is on this website, too, that you'll find all comments posted by Internet users. So public comments that can be seen by all. Everyone may react to comments posted to be entirely transparent. And that, of course, is one of our founding principles. What is important, too, is that we will set up specific email addresses for each call for comments so that we can simp uh, users can simply post their comments. They just send an email. Each comment posted will be published on the web pages I spoke of before. The other important part is that everything is archived to ensure uh, transparency and sustainability of the project. Each web page dedicated to each public consultation will be archived on the OP3FT's pages org. Even for decisions that have been taken before, you can always access comments posted, reports published, and decision projects. And to see how at OP3FT we adopt important decisions relating to all Internet users. <coughs> So, switching from the introduction of Rogan's technology to its spread. As I said before in my introduction, public consultations will take place soon. They will be mandatory once we open up FCR to Internet users. What's this really all about concretely? If you take the topics we I've been speaking about since the start of our conference. We spoke of technical FSDL specifications, the forthcoming updates 3.1, I believe, of the specs will be subject to public consultation normally. The Charter of Contributors to Development of uh, Forgan Technology at AMO we spoke of, if it's to be updated, it will require public consultation. Appointments or renewals of the term of members of the board of directors of OP3FT, and this doesn't exist in many organizations, will also be subject to public consultation. These are concrete examples of what we will be seeing in the coming months. Comment made off mic in the auditorium. If the arguments are well founded, it's not compulsory, but the project may thereafter be abandoned. Comment in the auditorium off mic. Answer. It's a consultation. The board of directors is not obliged to follow some opinions. You have a decision project with different opinions. If you have 70% of people against <coughs> and uh, with good arguments and we have no counter arguments, it should lead to the project being abandoned. But if the arguments are fallacious or not well founded by people who want to just want to harm others, let's say you have a pressure group that is trying to 
to make us choose one platform over another, that goes against our founding principles, and we can't uh, follow that type of opinion. We're working in the common interest and not for a particular group of people. So people who try to influence us to develop one platform over another, that couldn't lead to abandoning a decision project. On the other hand, let's say for appointing a member of the board of directors, if someone gives arguments that this or that person has been sentenced by the courts before, we'll have to take that into account, for example. But let's say that the overall idea is for users to be involved at an early stage and during the public consultations to validate our work. If we got it all wrong, if 70% of people say that what you did is not good, that means that we got something wrong somewhere, meaning we'll have to start the project all over again. Abandoning doesn't mean totally abandoning it. It just means redoing it, being better, and uh, having an open air to objections made to arrive at a consistent project that is in line with our founding principles to make sure that they comply with the goals we spoke of earlier. If we overlook simplicity and internet users remind us of that, we must take it into account. If we overlook security features, the same would apply. It's a bit... Well, public consultations are a way of having some control over what we do. So the question was, what happens when a majority is against a decision by OBT3FT? Well, I have the mic. Aurélien Propt from Gene Kit. Um, you talked about 70% people going one way or another. In this new version of the bylaws, do you have anything provided to make sure that there is rep that those people are challenging these new specs are representative? How can you make sure that you don't have an army of lobbyists paid by whoever who would try and influence the decision making process? Well, it's a bit like what's going on with the internet in any public consultation procedure like the one organized by ICANN if you want to post a comment you need to introduce yourself so if you have a doubt about who this person is whether he represents a lobby or not you can carry out your due diligence I mean this is a small world well it's a big planet with three billion web surfers but it's a small world and then it's our responsibility and the responsibility of the working group to analyze the comments who posted it is this person representative of a group of users what's his or her legitimacy to talk about this or that I mean there are people who can talk I mean a WIPO arbitrator who would make comments on the section in our charter that relates to brand protection, he has legitimacy. But if he comes to make a comment about the FSDL spec, he's less, he has less legitimacy. So that's our work. That's the work of the community itself. Because when we have this public consultation procedure which is launched, all comments are made in public. And people can say, hang on, I know this guy, and he is representing the interests of Microsoft or Apple or whatever big company. Because you can't be totally masked. I mean, there is always some, someone who will know that you've made this comment because you're lobbying. So archiving everything, making everything public, will lead to self-control. And... I think we will seldomly be confronted to this type of problem, and if we are, we'll be able to identify it and respond to it. Anonymity. If I'm a web surfer, I want to be part of, to be involved in public 
consultation. I like the Frogans project, but I don't want to give my identity. Can I do that? Well, it depends. How? What's your legitimacy? I mean, if I don't know who you are, so it will also depend on the content. Maybe some comments, for some comments, we can cope without knowing who is the author. Like Wikipedia, for instance, people can post and we don't know who they are. Well, and this doesn't damage their legitimacy. Well, it depends, because if you post something which is wrong, which is erroneous, you'll have loads of comments. But there will be a way to take part, to be part of it, and remain anonymous. Well, you know, there is always a way you can create an email address in just three clicks and you will write an email. If you introduce yourself saying, Hi, hello, I'm Brad Pitt and I'd like to say this, this and that, you won't have any legitimacy. So what's the interest of participating in a public consultation process the way we designed it if it's so either you've got something to say and you want to defend it because the idea is to post comments to tell OP3FT oh you should have clarified this or you should have provided for that so if you want to support us and help us refine our technical specs and charters you need to tell us who you are what's your legitimacy and and say well i worked in in writing such and such specs and i'm a specialist of php and in such spec we forgot to this and that okay we're not having a debate here but legitimacy can also stem from how smart what you say is yeah this is why sometimes being anonymous sometimes is not an issue but if you are generating a polemic debates it, it will all depend on the content we've not said it in writing that you need you must absolutely tell us who you are you we don't force people to do that but we encourage them so people will contribute via email yeah Will all email addresses be available? Will they be displayed in the archives? No. No, because an email address is personal data, unless the sender wants his email. Like he says, if people want to respond to me, my email address is, and then writes his email address, we won't delete it from the message. Okay, thank you very much about all this information about public consultation. Thank you so much, Julie.